Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive with Dr. Rebecca Risk. Do you ever feel that even though nothing seems seriously wrong and you pass all the medical tests, that you still feel that your health, pain, and fatigue are completely out of control? It doesn't have to be that way. Listen to the tips and suggestions given on our program today and take back control of your health. Now, here is Dr. Rebecca Risk. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. And before we start today's show, I want to talk about the devastating fires that have destroyed over 250,000 hectares of land in my home province of Alberta and Canada. We have had a dry spring, and this fire is expected to burn for months. 80,000 people who are residents of Fort McMurray have been evacuated. Since this is so close to home, it is close to my heart. The Humane Society is taking donations to help the displaced animals and those who are still trapped in the evacuated area, and the Canadian federal government has promised to match all donations to the Red Cross for this cause. So there is nothing else you can do. You can donate. I am always so touched when Canadians reach out to each other, defining the meaning of neighbour in a country so large. I also want to thank the emergency workers who are working tirelessly and the volunteers who are helping the tens of thousands who are who are displaced and have lost their homes. Joining me today is Dr. Lee Cowden, who is an accomplished doctor who has been treating Lyme disease for nearly a decade. Dr. Cowden is a consultant to Nutramedics, the company that makes the Cowden Support Program to treat Lyme disease. This program has helped thousands who have been touched by Lyme disease. Nutramedics has donated nine months of this protocol to one of my listeners. So please listen to the show and then send me an email at anantacalgary at gmail.com about how this protocol can change your life and how the show has helped you. Send this to me by May 15th at noon and then I'll announce a winner. I do credit this program with saving my life when I was bedridden with Lyme and now use it with my patients. Dr. Cowden, I want to welcome to you to the show. Yes, thank you for having me on. So how did you develop this program? In 2002, I was uh, hosting an international uh, conference in Dallas, or actually in Fort Worth, <laughs> on, uh, on cancer and uh, a uh, naturopathic friend of mine came to the conference and brought her grandson, and she told me that uh, her grandson had been an A student and an avid athlete, and he, um, you know, uh, became ill and went downhill, and she, they, they sought out uh, different doctors and finally found a Lyme literate physician, and the doctor said he's clearly got Lyme disease and started treating him with antibiotics, but he got progressively worse. So at, at the conference, we were standing next to the Nutramedics booth, and she said, what, what can we do? I said, well, you know, this, uh, this Peruvian cat's claw is supposed to be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good antimicrobial. Why don't we interject? We test that. So we did, and it tested great. And so uh, I said, you need to get a hold of the line alert position, get per- permission to stop the antibiotics, and go on this uh, herb and see what happens. And uh, without, she, she took the boy home without telling me or the uh, grandmother he stopped the uh, antibiotic on his own and started the herb on his own, and within two weeks he was a lot better, and within two months he was very well. So <clears throat> she uh, went back to the Lyme literate physician with him and said uh, that, you know, the combination of things that we were doing, the, the cemento uh, herb and the, uh, the various other detox and drainage remedies, is what made, it, made him well. And uh, the, the doctor said, no, it can't be. She said, well, I'm pretty sure it was. And so uh, he said, well, I'll, I'll send you patients to, to show you that it, it isn't so. So he sent her 58 patients, uh, and all of them got you know, markedly better on the program, even though they had failed to improve on the antibiotic uh, that he was giving them. She, she called me up and said, I want to do a, a controlled study to, to, to study this. I said, I don't have time to do a study. She said, I just want you to show up, and I'll do the study. I said, okay, I can show up. And so we did an 18-week study with uh, uh, paired patients. Uh, there was 14 in each group, and we evaluated them initially and found one of our uh, patients in the treatment group had ovarian cancer that they didn't know they had, so we referred her over to a surgeon to do uh, the removal of the ovary, and the rest of the patients uh, finished the study. And during that, during that study, there was, there was a, uh, about a 70% improvement by 10 weeks, and there was a uh, close to a 90% improvement by the uh, 18th week in the uh, patients in our control group, I mean in our treatment group, but the control group had almost no improvement. So <clears throat> we, knew, we knew that we were on to something, and uh, after the study was officially over, I continued to follow several of the patients that were in our, in our treatment group, 
and uh, I would withdraw certain things from the treatment that, uh, that that we were using to, you know, initially to try to help get them well, to see if they got worse or, or, or you know, got better or, or remained the same. If they if they got worse, I knew that that thing that I had withdrawn was important, and I would put it back into the program. If it if they didn't change, I knew that whatever I withdrew was not important, so I left it out. And so it, over the next couple of years, it, the program skinnied down quite a bit to the basics and. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, after that, we got a I got a call from Dr. Richard Horowitz in New York, and he said I got ten thousand Lyme patients in my practice. Uh, five hundred five hundred of them are doing very poorly. And uh, do you have any ideas? I said I think I do. And uh, so I sent him the Empiric program through the internet, and he bought the products and started those uh, a couple hundred patients on that program that I'd sent him through the email. And uh, after six months, seventy uh, percent of the patients were markedly better. And so, you know, he presented that at the International Lyme and Associated Disease Syndrome uh, conference that fall. He called me up excited about that. And I said, that, that's, you know, 70% is really good, but, but not very good for the 30%. What are you going to do about those? And so he said, well, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you can come up to my office and evaluate those and uh, see if there's something else we should, be, we should do for them. So I did that. And revised the program, and uh, he put another couple hundred patients on the, on the revised program, and 85% of those patients got, you know, fairly significantly better. So that's, that's when the, uh, when the uh, Nutramax company said, you know, can we, uh, our, our distributor in Ecuador would like to have a, a copy of this protocol. Is it okay if we send that to them? And I said, sure. So they, they, he sent that program down there to, to the uh, people in Ecuador, and they posted it on their website. And before I knew it, I was getting calls from all over the United States for people that wanted to come be treated for Lyme disease. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it is an amazing protocol, and I, I think it gives people another option as well. I mean, for me, antibiotics weren't an option because my liver couldn't tolerate them. So when I found your protocol, I was very grateful for it. And I think there's a lot of people in that same situation, either where the antibiotics haven't worked or they're just not able to tolerate them. So I, I think it's a blessing that that program is available to people. Yeah, it's, it seems it seems to be helping a lot of people in not just the United States, but all, a lot of other countries as well. <clears throat> it's um, gr- growing in popularity in Europe. And in Australia, I gave a presentation down there a couple of years ago, and some uh, Entomologist uh, analyzed 5,000 ticks and didn't find uh, Borrelia in any of the ticks, and he pronounced uh, Australia free of Lyme disease. <laughs> oh. uh, but, but, but he just discounted the the, the 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 fact that you know lot, Australians travel to a lot of other countries, including the United States, and you know in the United States you can get the uh, the, the disease not just by tick bites, but by uh, any kind of biting insect, uh, you know mosquitoes, uh, fleas lice, mites, uh, scabies, et cetera. And uh, so, you know, they're, they're, uh, the, the, the disease is grossly under-recognized uh, worldwide. You know, a lot of doctors in the United States think it only exists in, in the northeastern United States up around Lyme, Connecticut, where it was originally described. But, but we now know that, uh, that there's people with Lyme disease in every state of the United States and in every continent, so, except, except possibly Antarctica. Um, you know, we have the, the same problem in Canada, and they, they say that it's not here, but the problem is that we don't have any studies or statistics to show either way. Um, so to deny it is um, uh, not accurate, uh, you know, because we don't know. <laughs> um, we, we still have to do those studies. And, you know, the people that are being diagnosed with Lyme and having some of them even target rashes um, tell me that uh, it is here. Yeah. Yeah. In the United States, the uh, Center for, D- for Disease Control, which is a, a, a division of the U.S. government, says that uh, that there's at least 300,000 new cases every year in the United States. And uh, so that means it's probably more than that. But, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, w- I would estimate that the percentage of the population in Canada that have it is comparable to what it is in the United States because the, the highest prevalence in the United States is in the northeastern United States, the second highest prevalence is in uh, Northern California, and the third highest prevalence is in the, uh, you know, around the Great Lakes. Yeah. Um, 
So, um, you know, even though, I mean, this is Lyme Awareness Month and I'm do, I am doing four shows on Lyme disease, but can you just tell us briefly for anybody who's tuning in as their first show this month, what Lyme disease is? Yes, uh, <clears throat> Lyme disease is, uh, is an uh, inflammatory infectious illness caused by a, a spiral-shaped bacteria called Borrelia. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of doctors say, well, it has to be Borrelia burgdorferi, that species of, bac- of Borrelia, in order to call it Lyme disease, because that's what Dr. B- Dr. Burgdorfer really originally described uh, back in the, in the uh, I think it's late, late 70s, early 80s, uh, up in Lyme, Connecticut. <clears throat> but uh, we know now that uh, several other species of Borrelia can also contribute to this illness. And it's very, very rare to find a patient that has the Borrelia in their body that has only Borrelia in their body. Usually at the time of the initial infection exposure from Borrelia, the person also in the, in, in the North American continent also gets exposed to uh, either Bartonella, one of the Bartonella species, species of bacteria, or one of the uh, Babesia species of protozoa. Uh, plus, in many cases, also Ehrlichia coxiella and other Rickettsii. The Rickettsii are the bugs that cause uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever and related diseases. And uh, and then we know that there's other other bugs that are often transmitted as well, like uh, Anaplasma and Mycoplasma and Chlamydia. And uh, in Europe, uh, the Yersinia often gets transmitted. So this is a combination of 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 bugs in the body causing uh, almost almost any symptom that you can imagine on the uh, nutramedics.ec website in the science library there's an article that was uh, written about <clears throat> the, the number of different disease conditions that are that are confused with Lyme disease and uh, there's 365 illnesses there now and uh, you know more being discovered all the time in the peer reviewed literature but that, that's a nice article because when you click on, on any one of those disease processes, it takes you to the place in the Internet where that article is, is where you can read that article about that disease process being connected to Lyme disease. And uh, so it's, you know, all the neurologic, almost all the neurological diseases, uh, you know, from MS to Alzheimer's disease. Dr. McClossey in Switzerland found that 25% of all uh, patients with Alzheimer's dementia have uh, Borrelia culturable from their from their brain on autopsy, and uh, and sixty five percent of all patients with Alzheimer's dementia have have culturable uh, spirochetes of other types in their brain. So that's a uh, probably one of the primary causes of, of Alzheimer's dementia. Doctor um, Lita Matman, before she died, <coughs> cultured the cerebrospinal fluid of of. 41 consecutive uh, patients with multiple sclerosis and found that 38 of those grew out Borrelia. And so it appears to be the primary cause of, uh, of multiple sclerosis, for example. We also know it causes cardiovascular disease and, and arth- arthritis conditions and gastrointestinal problems and <clears throat> you know a variety of other chronic conditions, and psychiatric conditions as well. So... It, it's uh, oftentimes referred to as the as the second great imitator. The first great imitator was uh, syphilis or Treponema pallidum, which is also a spiral shaped bacteria. But uh, you know that, that they're they're called imitators because they can imitate so many different disease processes. So, uh, how is this disease traditionally uh, treated? If you're diagnosed, what what happens at your doctor's office? Well, the, the Infectious Disease Society of America <clears throat> wrote an article, I think it was in 2005, that said that, that all Lyme disease can be, can be successfully treated with uh, two to four weeks of, of, of standard antibiotics, usually just doxycycline alone. And uh, the, the doctors that were treating Lyme disease uh, you know, knew that that wasn't the case because the, 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 <clears throat> the Borrelia especially... Uh, is is very capable of mutating, and so it can, when it mutates, it becomes resistant to the treatment. And uh, you know, so the, there's studies that show that, uh, that that more than half of the people that get treated with antibiotics uh, for the Borreliosis, if they especially if they 
illness has been there longer than six weeks uh, are not uh, are, are still infected after they get the treatment. You know, you can still culture Borrelia from their body. You can still uh, find the polymerase chain reaction positive uh, results on on testing. So the uh, the you know, the, the antibiotics uh, apparently don't work. The, uh, the the public was so upset with the article that the Infectious Disease Society of America uh, published that the, the citizens of Connecticut uh, asked the, the uh, Attorney General of the state of Connecticut to investigate it, and he found that there was sufficient evidence to, to uh, bring the Infectious Disease Society of America to a court trial. And so the, when the court trial happened, the, the judge found against Infectious Disease Society of America and for the Attorney General and the people of the state of Connecticut. And the, the judge uh, opined that the Infectious Disease Society of America need to, needed to redo its research and redo its publication. Uh, to, to my knowledge, to this day, they still have not. So that was, you know, almost 10 years ago. Hmm. Um, so I think we that... have, and uh, in, in in what they also found in that in that court trial is that is that most of the doctors that were uh, on, you know on that original article in the, from the Infectious Disease Society of America were on the payroll of the insurance companies that did not want to pay for pharmaceutical antibiotic treatment for longer than four weeks. So mm-hmm. there's huge conflict of interest, and uh, so a lot of misinformation because of that huge conflict of interest. Um, you know, I think that's unfortunate. You know, as somebody who has been stuck in that controversy, um, it, you know, people are, are very ill and not getting the help that they need. Um, so I'm thankful for your program for that. And we are going to take a quick break. Joining me today is Dr. Lee Cowden, who is an accomplished doctor who has been treating Lyme disease for nearly a decade. He is a consultant with Nutramedics, the company that has made the Cowden support support program to treat Lyme disease. The Nutramedics has donated nine months of this program to help one of our listeners. So listen to the show and then send me uh, an email about how this protocol could change your life and how the show has helped you at anantacalgary at gmail.com and uh, send this in by May 15th at noon. And we'll be back shortly after this break. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. Ouch! What do you think of when you think of dental procedures? Well, when you think about it, the teeth and the rest of the body are strongly connected. What happens in one part affects the other. In the Tooth Body Connection with host Dr. Don Ewing, we'll explain more about these concepts as well as discuss the role that your teeth play in your overall health. You'll learn about amalgams and how removing them the wrong way can be toxic to your body. Tune in Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Voice America Health & Wellness. The largest syndicated alternative health talk program has come to the Voice America Network. The Dr. Bob Martin Show is the program that will answer your health questions and help you to heal your own body of many different ailments. Each week, you'll hear the answers that Dr. Bob gives to his callers that help them to be their own doctor most of the time. We'll also discuss developments on the health care front and what you need to do to keep your body in top form. The Dr. Bob Martin Show airs Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific on Voice America Health and Wellness. We are bombarded daily with information about beauty products and anti-aging treatments. Do you know how they have been tested? Are they truly going to make a change or just take the change out of your pocket? Tune in to Shelly's Show and Tell with host Shelly Hancock. We'll bring you the top-rated skincare products and treatments tested by Real Transformation Skin Care Centers. We'll motivate you to make the best changes. Listen Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern on Voice America Health & Wellness. Your life, your health, your network. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. 
To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk, and joining me today is Dr. Lee Cowden, who is an accomplished doctor who has been treating Lyme disease for nearly a decade. Dr. Cowden is a consultant to Nutramedics, the company that makes the Cowden Support Program to treat Lyme disease. Nutramedics has donated nine months of this protocol to one of my listeners, so please listen to the show and then send me an email at anantacalgary at gmail.com about how you feel this protocol could change your life and how this show has helped you. Um, you can send that in by May 15th at noon, and I'll announce the winner. So, uh, Dr. Cowden, um, with this program, I mean, we talked before the break about, um, you know, antibiotics and, of course, even the the, the program, like wh- how long they're supposed to be treated with antibiotics for this disease is four weeks, which, um, you know, as you said, isn't effective. How does the Cowden support program work um, in relationship to antibiotics? Like, is there a difference of what's happening there? Yeah, considerably different. Uh, you know, the, the, the concept uh, with antibiotics is that you kill enough bugs, then you're well. But, uh, but it isn't really so with Lyme disease because Lyme, in Lyme disease, there's all the biotoxins that have accumulated in the body as a result of having had the, the infectious illness for you know, some, some protracted period of time. In addition, there's, uh, there's a variety of other toxins that, uh, that, that people accumulate uh, during the course of their life, and those, uh, those other toxins will also, um, you know, make it harder for the immune system to work and make it easier for the bugs to grow. And so uh, if you don't do something about those other toxins, the patient really never, never gets well. And so that's why the program is not just about killing bugs, even though there's, there's six different herbal antimicrobials that are used during the course of the program. There's, there's I think, eight additional substances that are used for, the, for trying to deal with some of the other issues. Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, for example, found that 57% of the American public were deficient in magnesium. And uh, magnesium is critically important because it is the uh, cofactor for a variety of enzymes. 50% of the metabolic enzymes that make ATP energy for the cell require magnesium. So without magnesium, you can't make energy for the cell. The white blood cells can't work, the uh, liver cells can't work, the brain cells can't work, and so on. So the person gets gravely ill. Now, if if the U.S. government acknowledges that 57% of the population are deficient in magnesium, it's probably really 87% or maybe even 97% of the population. So, so magnesium is a critical piece of getting well from the, uh, from the chronic uh, borreliosis. When a person is chronically stressed, they waste, mag- waste magnesium through the kidneys into the toilet, and uh, <clears throat> they get um, you know, d- depleted in the magnesium because of that wasting. And then when the, when the wasting uh, uh, pers- persists, they, they get solo in magnesium <clears> that they can't have normal nerve conduction, normal muscular contraction, can't have normal uh, bowel function, can't have normal heart function, so everything falls apart. Now, so that's just one supplemental nutrient that's added to the, the program compared to just giving antibiotics. Uh, most people are, that, that have Lyme disease are very toxic, as I mentioned, and there's a variety of things that are used in the Calvin Support Program for the purpose of, of detoxification. The, the SPARGA is to detoxify the sulfa antibiotics. Uh, the U.S. government, uh, EPA, did a study in 2008 and published that, those results and found that uh, the water supply in every major city has chemical levels of pharmaceutical drugs in the water supply, including sulfa antibiotics, sulfa diuretics, and sulfa um, diabetic drugs. So the sulfa antibiotics and diabetic, diuretics and, and diabetic drugs Will, will build up in the body, uh, bind to the sulfation pathway enzymes that make glutathione for the body and, and impair the body's ability to produce sufficient glutathione to, de- to detoxify itself. So the, the sparga is for the purpose of getting those sulfa drugs out so that the 
sulfation pathway enzymes can make enough glutathione to help detoxify the body. Uh, the berber and, and parsley are quantum physically imprinted herbal uh, extracts that help to detoxify the liver, the gallbladder, the kidneys, the urinary bladder, the lymphatic system, and the ground matrix. The ground matrix is the space between the cells. Whenever a person is sick uh, with toxicity, uh, the, the picture that you should uh, uh, get about that per- person is that their body is like New York City with all the garbage collectors on strike. So they have the, the toxins that are piling up in the uh, in the yard, in the street, because the garbage collectors are on strike. And pretty soon the, gar- the garbage is backing up in, into, the, into the houses. The houses are the cells of the body. So in order to get somebody well, you have to rehire the garbage collectors, put the blade on the front of the truck, plow the street, that's the lymphatic vessels, and get the lymph flowing again. And then you start uh, picking up the garbage in the yard and the street so that it doesn't back up into the houses. And so that's what the berber and the parsley do. The, uh, the panella and the mapalo, uh, mapalo is an, uh, an optional treatment, but panella and mapalo are both great at detoxifying the brain and the, and the, and the spine and the, and the nervous tissue of the, of the body. A lot of people with Lyme borreliosis have uh, peripheral neuropathy or brain fog or forgetfulness or confusion or uh, you know, inflammation up and down their spine and, and disease processes in their or, internal organs because of the inflammation in their spine. <clears throat> so if you can get those toxins out, it helps tremendously. Uh, you know, there's uh, you know, adjunctive therapies in this program in order to try to uh, improve the outcome by improving the environment. The bugs grow wherever toxins are. And if you can get the toxins out, then you don't have to keep treating with antimicrobial agents forever. Finally, the body uh, is detoxified enough and healthy enough for the immune system to work and, and to keep the bugs in check. And that's the, that's always the goal is to treat for the shortest period of time on the Calvin program that you can you know get symptom-free. And then once you're symptom-free, you go to one dose per day of the antimicrobial agents and one, you know a fewer dose, a fewer number of doses per day of the other agents. And then if you're still well after a month or two, then you come off the program and see if you can stay well. If you can, then then that means you've accomplished the, the goal of getting rid of the biotoxins, the man-made toxins, the building back up the magnesium levels and, and some of the other nutrients. And then the person can maintain health without having to continue to stay on the program. With antibiotics, uh, the, the, the infection always comes back, always. And so it's just a matter of time when the, when the infection does come back. The only thing the allopathic doctors know to do is to put the patient back on the antibiotics. Uh, you know, I, th- I think that's um, interesting to hear. I mean, I- I've seen this in clinic as well when people have done, you know, three years of antibiotics and they're still feeling the same as they did in the beginning with maybe worse because of um, what the antibiotics have done to them. And then when I start implementing your program, uh, we start seeing changes and they seem to be lasting changes. And, you know, it, it goes slow, but then, you know, this person is turning around and they are getting their life back. Um, which is um, amazing, especially after they've done so many, you know, they've been sick for so long and the antibiotic treatment has gone on for so long and they still haven't gained that. Yeah. I, I still teach occasionally in the Dallas area. And this past week I was teaching there. And uh, one, of the, one of the young ladies that was in our study back in 2003 came into the office where I was teaching. It was really great to see her. But at that time she was 18 years old. She was uh, homebound. Uh, she had to um, get around with a walker eight, at 18 years old. So she couldn't bear her own weight. She had, she had, had, had to get around with a walker. She was having anaphylactic shock reactions multiple times per week. She, she had never been out on a date. And uh, the, uh, the doctor that was taking care of her said that she uh, would have a difficult time trying to graduate high school and would never go to college, would never uh, get married, would never have a child. And uh, this, this young lady... Uh, after, after the program was officially finished, uh, after eight week, 18 weeks, she continued in the program. And uh, in, in nine months into the, uh, the account support program, went off to college, worked her way through college in three and a half years, got her bachelor's degree, then went on to get her master's degree, now is working on her Ph.D. degree, got married, and now has a healthy child. You know, so the, the prognostication of the, of the doctors was completely wrong for her. And it, I think it's criminal when a, when a 
a doctor tells a patient, you'll never do this, you'll never do that, you'll never do that, what they're doing is they're stealing that patient's hope. And uh, so a big part of the overcoming has to be in helping the patients to understand that those doctors may be saying what they think, but they don't know anything. Those doctors don't know anything. Uh, you know, don't know any of the possibilities that are, that are there in integrative medicine. And uh, so it's, so they shouldn't say it that way. They should say, I don't know of anything else that can help you. Go go search. See if you can find something. Um, you know, you know I, I, I love hearing that story because this is one of the reasons why I started treating Lyme and mainly because of my own story where I was bedridden. And, you know, I couldn't even get up and walk across a room to get a glass of water. That was a challenge. And I had a severe movement disorder as well. And, um, you know, after three years of treatment on your program, I, um, you know, took a while to recover as well after and get my stamina back. But, you know, now I work full time and I also have this radio show, which adds extra to my week. And um, I, you know, I have the energy and the stamina and I'm still able to do the things that I want to do in my life, which I think is what everybody who is chronically ill strives for is, um, you know, I try to find that balance because I know how important it is to also take time you know, to myself and, and not to overwork myself. But um, I live a normal life now, which um, a lot of people with chronic Lyme, you know, after 20 years can only dream of. Yeah. One of the things that I would urge people to do that, that have had Lyme disease and have gotten well with the Calvin Support Program is is whenever they get a, get a severe trauma, and a trauma would be, a major motor vehicle accident, uh, an unexpected appendectomy, a major flu illness, a death of a loved one, loss of a job, some major event happens, don't wait till they're sick again, but immediately start the calcium support program uh, at, you know, full dose, you know, every, everything that's in the program for about a month to, to, to keep their body from getting the bug again and uh, keep the bug from growing back. My belief is that once you have these bugs, they're, they're, they're in the body for life, but as long as you're keeping your toxin load down and your immune system up, the, bug, the bugs won't create symptoms. They won't uh, create disease. You know, so the, the immune system is keeping them in check. But when you when you get a trauma, your immune system goes down and the bugs go up. And that's uh, you know that's prevent. You know, you, you can take preventive measures by taking the, the program for for a month just to keep the bugs from coming back. So can you explain to us um, why they can come back? Well, yeah. If, if a per, if a person uh, is toxic, they're going to be susceptible to to infectious illness. Uh, if a person uh, has a weakened immune system, they're going to be susceptible. Um, back in medical school, the infect, the chief of the infectious disease there uh, gave me a, a, a mathematical formula uh, that that I found to rem, to, to be true. Uh, there's very few things that I learned in medical school that are still true. But, uh, but that one is. And he said that infection equals the number of microbes that get into the body times the virulence of that microbe, how, how, how hardy it is, divided by the host resistance. So if you have a large number of microbes that get into the body, then it doesn't take very much virulence for, the, for that to create illness. If the bug is very virulent, for example, Shigella, it only takes 10 bacteria for the average person to develop uh, bloody diarrhea from Shigella, whereas it takes 10,000 of most other bacteria to create, uh, you know, severe gastrointestinal symptoms. So, you know, Shigella is just that much more virulent. If the immune system goes down, then, you know, it doesn't take very much virulence or very many bugs to create disease. So, you know, when, when you're working on getting well from uh, Lyme disease or any other chronic illness, uh, then your, your goal should be get the toxins out because that's one of the things that impairs your your, your body's resistance. Uh, you know, do uh, eat the right foods to, to to provide the building blocks to make your immune system strong and your and your or, your detox organs strong and your other organs strong, and uh, and make sure that you uh, avoid electromagnetic fields that, that damage your immune system. Make sure you get enough sleep every night. Make sure you get enough deep. You know, deep breathing and exercise and stretching, and uh, you know, plenty of water to uh, to flush toxins out of the body and carry nutrients into the body. You know, do those things that are going to build your body up 
And when you do, it doesn't take very much to get rid of the bug. But if you're just pounding in with antibiotics and you're doing nothing else, it's going to take a lot of antibiotics to, to have any hope of reducing the bug count to, to the point where where the immune system can get ahead of it. The other problem with the antibiotics is that they, they cause uh, overgrowth of fungus in the gut, and most of the funguses produce mycotoxins or aflatoxins that are immune suppressive and sometimes even cancer-causing. So you're you're taking these antibiotics, <clears throat> taking the antibiotics, you're killing off the friendly bacteria in the gut. The fungus overgrows. The the fungus produces the mycotoxins, and then the mycotoxins add on to the toxic load and suppress the immune system. So how can you expect to get well when you do when you go that approach? Um, well, yeah, I I agree with you. You know, I, it seems treating Lyme disease, or, and really treating any um, illness, and especially anything chronic, you have to look at everything. Um, you know, this isn't just a strep infection that'll go away in uh, seven weeks of antibiotics. So, you need to change your whole life and uh, try to keep that balance so that you stay healthy. Mm-hmm. So we, we are going to take a quick break. Uh, joining me today is Dr. Lee Cowden, who um, has been treating Lyme disease for nearly a decade. Dr. Cowden is a consultant with Nutramedics, which is the company that makes the Cowden support program. Nutramedics has donated nine months of this protocol to one of my listeners. So if you listen to the show and then send me an email at anantacalgary at gmail.com to let me know how this protocol can change your life and how this show has helped you, and send this to me by May 15th at noon and we'll announce a winner. So we'll be back shortly after this break. Opinions, options, answers. You're listening to Voice America Health & Wellness. Hi, I'm John Rainey, Chief Financial Officer of United Airlines, and I'm honored to be the National Chair for the 2015 March for Babies campaign for the March of Dimes. United is a proud supporter of the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more mothers have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit marchofdimes.org. Frankly Speaking About Cancer is a program designed to empower survivors and their caregivers to deal with the social and emotional challenges of cancer. The show will invite physicians, researchers, nurses, social workers, patients, and caregivers to share their advice on how to live a better life with cancer. Join host Kim Tibaldo, President and CEO of the Cancer Support Community, Tuesday afternoons at 1 p.m. Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Network. Opinions, options, answers. You're listening to Voice America Health and Wellness. You are listening to Falling Through the Cracks with your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk. To reach the program today, please call in to 1-866-472-5792. Again, that's 1-866-472-5792. You may also send an email directly to Dr. Risk. The email address is anantacalgary at gmail.com. Now, back to Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Falling Through the Cracks. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Risk, and today is our second episode of four that we're doing for May, which is Lyme Awareness Month. Joining me today is Dr. Lee Cowden, who is an accomplished doctor, and he's been treating Lyme disease for nearly a decade. He consults with Nutramedics, who um, is the company that makes the Cowden Support Program. Nutramedics has donated nine months of this program to one of my listeners. So if you can listen to this show and then send me an email at Ananta Calgary at gmail.com and let me know how this protocol can change your life and how the show has helped you and send this to me by May 15th at noon and I'll announce a winner. So Dr. Cowden, um, can you just explain how the, what the biofilm is in relationship to Lyme? Yes, uh, biofilm is produced by uh, various microbes. Uh, Borrelia is a, is a great biofilm former. The biofilm is very much like uh, the snot that's in a person's nose, it's a it's a it's a glycoprotein, and it uh, it 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 uh, covers over the microbes and hides them and shields them from the immune system and from antibiotics. 
And so inside the biofilm, these, these bugs can grow and divide and multiply un, unscathed, un, unattacked. And uh, inside of a biofilm, usually it's not just the Borrelia that, that produces the biofilm, but a variety of other uh, microbes, the, the, what we call the co-infection microbes like Bartonella and Babesia, Ehrlichia, Coxiella, etc. And uh, so these, these bugs are then there uh, growing together kind of a co- in a colony shielded from the from the attack from the from the from the uh, an- from the antibiotics from, from the herbal antimicrobials from the uh, immune system now the the one reason why the um, antibiotics don't work very well is because they don't do anything about the biofilm the calum support program does address the biofilm and uh, we uh, we have studies from the University of New Haven Connecticut from dr uh, Eva Sapi's lab that showed that, uh, for example, that Borrelia, sorry, that, that Bar- Banderol plus um, Cemento will get rid of the Borrelia biofilm uh, in in almost almost every case, and which means that the, the the and Banderol and the Cemento are the first two herbs that are given during the calcium support program, and then after day 78 they're given uh, tw- 12 and a half days out of every 14. Uh, uh, on an alternate that basis with with some of the other herbal antimicrobial agents, we, we have strong, uh, pretty, pretty strong evidence that that, that these other uh, herbal antimicrobials are also biofilm uh, dissolvers uh, from other research that Dr. Sapi's lab has done. And uh, you know when when you look at uh, doxycycline in an in vitro test like Dr. Sapi did against Borrelia and compare it to these herbs. These herbs far outshine the, uh, the, the doxycycline because uh, they'll, they'll get rid of not just the biofilm form of these bugs, but also what's called the granular form or the, <clears throat> or the round body form of these microbes. These microbes, the Borrelia, are, are uh, able to change shapes. Uh, within two hours after a spirochete, a Borrelia spirochete bacteria is exposed to an antibiotic. It forms little blebs on its on its side, and those little blebs contain all the genetic material necessary to make an entire new spirochete. But these little uh, blebs, these little round body forms, are completely impervious to antibiotics. They can live for hours, days, weeks, months, or even years uh, in the presence of antibiotics. And when the antibiotics are finally stopped, these um, round body forms change back into a spiral shape. Uh, bacteria that can easily invade a cell, and uh, so that's that's one of the reasons why the antibiotics don't work. The, the the pharmaceutical antibiotic treatment is not addressing those round body forms of Borrelia, nor the uh, biofilm forms of Borrelia. Um, well, that would explain why you're saying you know every time people with um, who take antibiotics have a relapse, and it doesn't always happen with the support program. They can go on to living a healthy life is because you're taking care of um, more than just the active bacteria. And since it can hide in so many different ways in the body, I think it's important to approach all of those aspects. Yeah, yeah very important. <clears throat> you know, the, uh, a lot of people uh, have, have chronic mystery illness, I call it. You know, they, they don't, they've never had a clear-cut diagnosis. Uh, they're just suffering in various ways, many different symptoms many different organ dysfunctions. And in those patients, what we found is that even if you don't have a clear-cut diagnosis, if you do the calcium support program, in a large percentage of those patients, their, their symptoms go away. So, so a lot of times you don't know what you treated, but because the herbs are safe, they've, they've been tested at the University of Waikil in Ecuador and found to be safe at several hundred times the, the recommended dose in humans, scaled down to animal body weight. So you're, you're giving this uh, calum support program uh, for this mystery illness, not really knowing what you're treating, but, but you're, you know you're getting rid of a variety of microbes because these have antifungal, antibacterial, antiprotozoal, anti-helminthic or anti-worm properties, as well as antiviral properties. And so you're getting rid of all these creatures, and you're clearing the toxins out with the berber and the parsley and the vanilla and the mapalo and the sparga. And you're also, you know, building back up the uh, the magnesium depletion, which is is so commonly prevalent in uh, in, in people in the third world countries. And uh, you know, before you know it, the patient's well, but they don't know what they had, and it doesn't really matter as long as they're well, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I know some people get focused on what is it and what do I have, but I think with Lyme and with a lot of these, as you call, mystery illnesses, um, we live in a gray area where we don't have perfect testing for all these things. So, um, you know, as long as you get your life back, I think that's the most important part than the, the why. Yeah. Um, Dr., Dr. William Harvey and Dr. Patricia Salvato have, uh, were practicing in Houston back in 2000 when Dr. Harvey got ALS amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is supposed to be uniformly fatal within two years. And he uh, he did testing on himself and found that he had Borrelia. So he, he started himself on uh, high-dose intravenous antibiotics and, and other th- other treatments and uh, became completely well. So he thought, my goodness, I'm in Houston. This is not We're not supposed to have Borrelia down here. So he uh, had 455 patients in his practice, and they did uh, Borrelia testing on all of those and on the, these are patients that had, uh, every one of them had chronic fatigue, but, but they had a variety of other symptoms, you know, arthritis and uh, neurological conditions and, uh, you know, gastrointestinal conditions and so on. And uh, in, the, in the first test, one-third of those patients were positive for Borrelia. And this is in Houston, Texas, where it wasn't supposed to be present at all. And uh, so he, t- uh, he thought, well, you know, the test might have missed them in that, in that first group, so he retested ones that were negative on the first test, and some of those were positive, and they retested those that were negative on the first two tests, and, and some of those were positive. So over the course of a year, almost every patient in that group of 455 patients was positive for Borrelia, and uh, so they, you know, they started treating those patients, and many of them, you know, got over their their chronic failure to I call it chronic adult failure to thrive. They were, you know, chronically ill, but but nobody knew why, and so just by by treating the, uh, the the Borrelia and the other uh, microbes, many of the patients got better. Um, so you you said um, after seventy eight days, you changed people over to rotate herbs or to pulse herbs. Can you explain what the benefit of that is? I'm sorry, you cut out for a second. Say it again. Um, can you just explain why um, at, later in the program you uh, rotate or pulse herbs? What the benefit of that is? Well, yes. Okay. When uh, when I was doing uh, follow through on some of the patients after the uh, formal study in 2003, uh, I noticed that if we gave the herbs continuously and then stopped them, uh, they all had recurrences. And I thought, well, that's got to be these pleomorphic forms or the biofilm forms that I've read about. Uh, I didn't know which, but uh, I thought, well, you know, if if we if we give the treatment for a time and then stop it for a time and allow these hiding forms to come out and then pound them again with another round of an herbal antimicrobial, I wonder if we can get rid of that uh, that tendency for them to have recurrences. And so I tried that, and, and it worked. So I tried different different durations of treating and, 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 and different durations of uh, staying off the, off the antimicrobial herbals and to, to see what was the best program. I tried, you know, five days on and two days off. I tried five and a half days on and one and a half day off. I tried 12 and a half days on and one and a half day off. I tried 12 days on and two days off. And what I found is if you if you'd left it off for two full days, they, they very often had a fairly strong Herx reaction or, or, or detoxification reaction from bug kill-off uh, when, when you started the antimicrobials back up. But if you only left it off for 36 hours, it was enough for, the, for the, a lot of the hiding forms to come out of hiding, and you, you pounded them again with the restart of the antimicrobial herbals, but they, but they didn't uh, have severe herxes. And so I thought, well, you know, we're, we're getting rid of some of the hiding forms every time we stop it, and so if we start and stop enough times, finally all the hiding forms will, will, will convert back into the invasive forms and uh, you know, the non-hiding forms, and then you know, eventually we won't have any hiding forms left. And so uh, we found that when you when you did the twelve and a half days on and one and a half day off, that after about uh, you know anywhere from four to six months, the patients uh, appeared to be able to stop the antibiotic, uh, the herbal antimicrobial. I'm talking about the you know Cemento, Mandrol, Commanda, uh, et cetera, and they and they wouldn't have uh, you know recurrence of symptoms. They would stay well. And so I thought, okay, well that that that's that's working. So. Don't argue with success. Just go with that program. 
Um, well, it, it does make sense when you're looking at um, them hiding so dramatically. If you just continue with the same thing, they'll probably just stay in hiding. And, yeah. um, you know, you have to trick them. I think they're pretty smart bugs. Yeah, well, the research had already shown that uh, most of the hiding forms would come out of hiding within 12 hours after you stop uh, your know, treatment. And, uh, you know, the half-life of the herbs in the body is not very long, maybe... Uh, three or four hours, we don't know exactly, but, uh, you know, not, not days like it is for some of the pharmaceutical antibiotics. And so if you just leave it off for 36 hours, you know, you, don't, you have almost zero herbal antimicrobial in the, in the body and in the bloodstream by the end of that period of time. So there's plenty, plenty of bugs that will think that the coast is clear and come out of hiding. Um, so when you're um, doing this pulsing, um, you're also, I mean, you talked in the beginning that we have more than the one infection. Um, it's more than just Lyme. We have all these co-infections and other infections. Um, how are these herbs affecting those infections as well? Well, yeah, the, the, these herbs that we're talking about, the, uh, the um Ba- uh, cemento is an uh, extract of the cat's claw. The bandol is a bark off a Peruvian tree. Kamanda is a bark off a Peruvian tree. Uh, Utunia is, uh, is an herb from China that has uh, pretty good anti- anti-Bartonella effects. Uh, <clears throat> you know, over time, we've had uh, you know the kina, which is um, uh, bark off another Peruvian tree similar to the one that co- that's used for treating malaria, the chinchona tree. Uh, We've, we've used, uh, you know, the uh, more recently the tangarana to get rid of uh, these these microbes. But anyway, most of these herbs are are, are uh, broad spectrum antimicrobials. They have effects against the bacteria, the rickettsia, the the funguses, the, the protozoal parasites like Babesia, against the, even the worms. When uh, when the Nutramax first produced Comanda, which is the first herbal antimicrobial that they produced after uh, Cemento. They sent me a, a box of it and said, here, try this out. They said it's, it looks like a very a very good broad-spectrum antibacterial, antimicrobial. <clears throat> so I had a patient that had a resistant bacterial infection. I gave a bottle to that patient, and they got well. And I had a patient that had uh, a very difficult uh, to treat fungus fungal infection, Gave it to that patient, and, and they got well. Uh, had a patient that had been on uh, four or five different rounds of pharmaceutical antibiotics for worms, and on the uh, fourth day, uh, about a couple of worms came out in the toilet after giving the commanda. And I thought, wow, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rename this stuff. So I called it K-E-E-P, KEEP. And that stands for Kills Everything Except People. Uh-huh. And then, <laughs> And then uh, when they came out with the bandrol, I, I did the same thing, and I found the same thing that it that it killed all the all the bacteria, almost all the bacteria. I tried it on almost all the funguses. I tried it on almost all the protozoal parasites, almost all the worms. So I called that one Keep Two, and now that uh, Tangarana has come out, I call that one Keep Three. So these are very broad spectrum herbal antimicrobials, and they have they're broad spectrum because they don't have just one antimicrobial agent in each herb. There's there's several different herbal antimicrobial agents in each herb. So it's like giving a combination antibiotic pack, uh, program. Um, so we are going to have to end the show. I've loved having you here. I love all this information, and I hope this has helped a lot of people to understand how your your program works and how effective it is and why it's important to assess all these different aspects of treating Lyme. Um, so is there, is there any way people can reach you if they have any further questions? Well, I'd love for all of your listeners to become uh, free members of our academy. Uh, the, the Academy of Comprehensive Integrated Medicine is a, a Panamanian-based company uh, that's ed, uh, virtual and educational. And uh, so that's www.acimconnect.com. So that's a, a, ACIM, this stands for Academy of Comprehensive Integrative Medicine. And then Connect is because we're connecting uh, patients with doctors, doctors with doctors, uh, patients with patients as far as uh, you know, support groups. So we're connecting you know, people and, 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 and products and devices and the technologies. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an honor to have you here. Thank you so much for having me on.
Um, so today we were speaking with Dr. Lee Cowden, who's the creator of the Cowden Protocol um, a program, which is uh, made by Nutramedics. Nutramedics has donated nine months of this program to one of my listeners. So if you've listened to this show and you feel this could, that this could help you or benefit you in any way, then send me an email and let me know how this can benefit you. Email is anantacalgary at gmail.com and send it in by May 15th at noon and tune in for the rest of the month to hear more about Lyme disease. We'll be doing two more shows this May. Thanks for listening and make today a great day. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Falling Through the Cracks. Feel alive and thrive. Please join Dr. Rebecca Risk again next Monday at noon Eastern Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. We'll talk more next week.